Good morning, everyone. I welcome you all here today as we come to celebrate this 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time. For any visitors among us, a special welcome to you. And please note that we have a tradition here after the conclusion of our final hymn that we all kneel and silently say three Hail Marys for the next to be called Home Among Us. A couple of announcements for everyone. Please note that our monthly Spanish Mass is tonight at St. Benedict's at 7.30 with um, food um, provided afterwards. Please note that on this Wednesday I will be available here at St. Mary's for confessions from 4 to 6 p.m. As always, please be sure and read the bulletin for more information about activities in our parish, including the Holy Hour, this Tuesday at 7 p.m. Now let us take a moment in silence to gather ourselves to prepare to celebrate this Eucharist that the, our Lord gives us.
so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the same faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it on. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Amaziah, priest of Bethel, said to Amos, Off with you, visionary. Flee to the land of Judah. There, earn your bread by prophesying, but never again prophesy in Bethel. For it is the king's sanctuary and a royal temple. Amos answered Amaziah, I was no prophet, nor have I belonged to a company of prophets. I was a shepherd and a dresser of sycamores. The Lord took me from following the flock and said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel the word of the Lord.
In him we have redemption by his blood for the forgiveness of transgressions. In accord with the riches of his grace that he lavished upon us, in all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will in accord with the favor that he set forth in him as a plan for the fulfillment of times to sum up all things in Christ, in heaven and on earth. In him we are also chosen, destined in accord with the purpose of the one who accomplishes all things according to the intentions of his will, so that we might exist for the praise of his glory. We who first hoped in Christ, in him you also who have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and have believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, which is the first installment of our inheritance towards the re redemption of God's possession to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord. Being sent with nothing. 
other than the clothes on their back and a walking stick. No baggage. Why do you think that is? Too often, when we go out into the world to share Christ with others, we have a lot of baggage ourselves. People will see our baggage first before they see Christ. So we have to drop it. We have to understand that we need Christ as much as the person we're going to. And that's where it comes to the ministry that happens in this church, the community table. The community table, there was a recent article about it that there's a couple things that weren't quite right in there. Uh, Deacon Dan did not found the community table. The person who founded it was Alice McLaughlin. Alice McLaughlin uh, is the one who came to me and she's the one who wanted to start this. It was about a year and a half later that Deacon Dan got involved. But in this, Alice used to be a nun. Her name was Sister Jerome. When she was Sister Jerome, Bishop Hogan had her go around the diocese to all the different parishes to teach them about what was called social justice and it still is. Now when I say the word social justice, some people react and think of the communists using that word. The church has had it longer than the communists did. It's not the same thing. In social justice from a Catholic perspective, it's recognizing Christ. In fact, the other thing that was wrong with that article, it didn't talk about the spirituality at all that was developed for the community table. Alice sat down with me for many sessions and we went over what would it look like. Spirituality was developed first. In fact, in all ministry, the spirituality will always come first. If we start a program, it might be a good program, but it will be secular in nature. Community table was never meant to be secular. It was never meant to solve the problem of hunger. It was meant to bring people together to share a common experience of Christ. Now, one of the major, there were several major people that played a role in that as far as saints. There was um, Dorothy Day, who's actually on the first step towards sainthood, uh, who dealt with homeless population in New York City, as well as those who were hungry. And then we have St. Francis de Sales, we have St. Francis of Assisi, and St. Vincent de Paul. One of the things St. Vincent de Paul brought to attention was, one of his quotes was, May the poor forgive us for our gifts of bread. I'm going to say it again. May the poor forgive us for our gifts of bread. Think about what that means. What it's saying is, is that too often when we give to others, we come from a place of power down to someone who's lower than us. That is not how it was set up to be. We are to be eye to eye with the person and recognize them as an equal in Christ. To treat them with respect, not cut them down, not be mean to them, but treat them as an honored guest. In the article, it actually said that they were patrons of our establishment. That couldn't be farther than the truth. They are honored guests. And in the history of spirituality in the church, we are honoring Christ who comes to us in the other person. This has been going on since the beginning of the church. In fact, early in the church's history, they used to make people wait sometimes three years to prove that they understood this part of it. This was the most crucial part of our faith, was to understand that we would reach out to other people, that we cared about the poor, that we cared about the homeless, that we cared about people and their problems. And people were left to understand that and work on that. And once they had enough evidence to show, yes, they really cared, they were allowed in the church. Now that part of the church's history was early, but it didn't last long. 
Unfortunately, we've kind of lost that process. It's a very important process because until we actually do something, we're really kind of hollow in our, in our being outreached to anyone. We literally have to understand how important it is to meet Christ in the other. And that's what the community table is all about. It is about recognizing the Christ that comes as an honored guest to us. Now many people have volunteered over the years since it started, and many people have left because of other obligations or they didn't feel needed. At this point, we're needing more help, especially with cleanup. And also, we used to get funded quite well from the um, Food Bank of the Southern Tier, but their funds have been cut from the government. And right now, we're getting very little, and we need help financially as well to keep this ministry alive. This is a ministry that helps teach us to go to the other, even in spite of our fears in spite of our not willingness to connect with another person that we don't understand. There are many people who come to us in need. We must also understand that we are in need. We need Christ. We need to see that Christ in the other. We need to see Christ in the person that people reject. Jesus told us that himself. When where somebody stares hungry, I'm there. How often are we recognizing Christ in the other person in the world today? The ones especially that are difficult to recognize. You know, um, in 1 John it actually says something very clear about this. If I hate my brother and say I love God, I am a liar. You cannot hate your brother or sister and still believe that you can love God. Hate has no place in our hearts, only God's love. That's not my brother or sister's problem, that's my problem if I have hate in my heart. It cannot exist. The faith of our church is calling us to the deeper levels, not just the easy levels, not just to receive the Eucharist, but to become the human vessels to take it out. The food we receive here, we share with others at the table. Those who cannot receive communion or who are not churched are still Christ to us. Our faith can only be transmitted by our works. We are being called to also graduate from sitting and just taking notes and getting information about our faith. We are called to move past that into action in our world. It doesn't have to be the community table. It could be other ministries that are around. But if we're going to take our faith seriously and we want to meet Christ, we want to hear His words, then we have to listen to the other person because we need them more than they need us. Because we say we believe, but what do we really believe if we have nothing to show for it? Our faith is all about the movement of the heart of Christ within us. The beating of our heart should match His beating. The recognition that Christ is present right here, right now, but it's also present. Christ is also present in everyone we will meet. How do we handle the people we don't like? How do we treat others that we don't like what they do? Are we respectful? Because respect is very important, by the way. Do we talk down to them, or do we talk with them and listen to them? This is hard work. We often don't want to hear hard messages. But the gospel is real. It's very real. It's very alive and very active in our lives if we will but live it in the world. I
holy and in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Knowing that God cares for all our needs, we offer these petitions. For Francis, our Pope, Salvatore, our Bishop, and for our Catholic Church, may we provide a place where the truth of God is shared with the compassion of Jesus' love for us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those killed, injured, and traumatized at the shooting at the political rally in Pittsburgh yesterday, and for an end to political division and polarization in our nation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our world leaders, may they work for a peaceful end to the wars between Ukraine and Russia and Israel and Hamas. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all married couples, may they embrace their call to total faithful and fruitful love with openness to new life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For each person to know their place in God's plan and to fulfill it, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our visitors, may their time here be a time of joy and renewal in the way of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parishes, that we allow the Lord to guide us in all that we do, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those on our prayer list, those in our prayer book of requests, for the sick, especially Deacon Ray Diffendorf, to know God's love, comfort, and grace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who died recently, and for all who have died to receive eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our parishioners for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, good and loving God, you have heard these prayers that we offer out loud, and you know the prayers deep in our hearts as we offer them all to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join us in singing number 777. Here I am, Lord.
To God the Almighty Father. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. And your hearts Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours, that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, 
giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis of Hope and Salvatore Bishop in all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, who blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed Apostles, St. Benedict, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
worthy that ye should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be
let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O oh Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. As we go forth, please join me in singing number 593, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light. <laughs> 